Not bad. Have you seen a real musket before? Only in books and newspapers. I made this one based on the relative shape and proportions I saw in reference images. When we're filming, some special gunpowder will be applied around the muzzle, which will help create the flash and smoke effects of a real gun being fired. Which means it'll be up to the actors to portray the recoil. <laughs> That's right. The sound effects for gunshots will also be added in post-production. Thank you, Veronique. I think I know where to start now. However, the musket's gears and firing pin could still use some work. Adding some wear on the metallic components will make them appear more realistic. Also, be sure to rub the muskets with some oil each time before we start shooting. That'll give the impression that the firearms have been well-maintenanced. Good point. You seem to know a lot, Miss Chevres. I assume you use these types of firearms on a regular basis? Yes, I perform routine maintenance on my weapons every day. Just like we as people need to eat and sleep, muskets need to be cleaned and maintained. I also perform similar care for my sword every day, and familiarize myself with its shape and weight, to the point where it feels like a natural extension of my body. Yes. This way, our weapons will never betray us in the heat of battle. Yes, well said. It seems we have the same philosophy on this topic. Oh, sounds like they found a common interest to talk about. Though these props differ from the muskets I use, I can still give you some pointers. Good. I look forward to your instruction. First and foremost, never point the weapon at anyone, regardless of whether it's a real or prop weapon or whether you're holding it or it's on the table. This holds for any time when you're not actively engaging an enemy. Okay, understood. When aiming the musket, extend your arm so that it's level with your shoulder and use your eye to look down the weapon's sights. Like this? Not bad. Now, try saying your lines. <clears throat> this is the end of the road for you. Good. Now turn your body a little. That way, you'll give your enemy less of a target to work with. And relax your shoulders. Here, allow me to demonstrate. This is the end of the road for you. Huh. Excuse me, Miss Chiori. Director Farina, there's something I wish to discuss with you. Oh? What is it? Like this? Yes, much better. What do you think? Mm hmm I do see your point. But are you sure you wish to do this? I believe it would be most fitting. Well, if you insist. All right. I understand. <clears throat> Miss Ayaka! Miss Chevris! Could the two of you please come over here? Huh? What's going on? Are we gonna start filming now? Let's go see. What is it? I have a question for you, Miss Chevris. Would you be willing to play the role of a musketeer? Uh, what? To clarify, I would like to turn over my role to Miss Chevres. But, brother... Don't worry, Ayaka. I actually view this as a good thing. I was becoming troubled trying to set aside some time to speak to the staff at the Palais Mermonia. I would like to have some conversations about the cultural exchange between our two countries, and I've heard that the bureaucratic process here can get... rather complicated. Now, I will be able to focus on my work. Besides, you also know that I'm not really one for public performances. Are you really sure? From a director's point of view, I also felt like the relationship between the two musketeers in the original story could be improved. The older brother in the story plays the lead role with his overbearing character, but this causes his character to overshadow that of his sister, and the theme of the two supporting and relying on each other isn't conveyed very well. But, if we were to change the siblings to two sisters of a similar age, then that aspect of the story might come through more clearly. Also, I've seen you instructing Ayaka. That cold and dignified personality is exactly what we need for the older musketeer. 
Of course, even with all these insights, the decision should still be made by Miss Chevrus. Uh... Chevrus mentioned that she really likes the story, right? Paima bets that she'll take the role. All right, I'll take the role. Good, it's decided then. I'll get started on making edits to the script. We'll also need to make some immediate adjustments to the lighting, props, and costumes. Oh, I have a feeling that our adaptation will be even better than the original story. You're doing a great favor for me, Miss Chevrus. You have my gratitude. Don't mention it. I like this character, so if anything, I should be the one thanking you. Well, since my brother is the one who brought up the idea, I suppose there's no need to worry. Let's go, Miss Chevrus. I look forward to working with you. Please, just call me Chevrus. Seems like you're really going out of your way to solve the problem I was having with your makeup. Surely you jest, Chiori. I assure you that I was mostly motivated by a desire to spend more time on formal business. Oh, come on. You really think I'd buy that? According to what I've heard from Ayaka, her brother is someone who can juggle ten different matters at the same time. I'm sure you have other reasons for backing out. Perhaps. Ayaka always said she wanted to go out and see more of the world, just like the Traveler. But I feel that she needs not only to see other nations, but also to make some different kinds of friends. I think it would be harder for her to make new connections with me constantly by her side. I would like to give her some space. Alright, go on. Spoil her some more. Ayato! It's too bad you're stepping down from the role. Paimon really wanted to see you act as a musketeer. <laughs> no need to poke fun at me. I'd wager that you also felt that I wasn't the best candidate for the role. <laughs> it's a little hard for Paimon to imagine you saying those lines. Yes. I've made an appointment to meet some people from the Palais Mermonia. Now, I will have some more time to prepare. Traveler, get the camera ready! Paimon, get the clapper board! Actors, to your positions! We're about to start shooting the first scene! <laughs> Go on now. And please take good care of Ayaka. Yep, don't worry! Thank you. I look forward to seeing the film when it's finished. Right. Now that we're all here, let me help set the scene for everyone. The first scene takes place when our two main characters are still living at the Baron's estate. They've been ostracized and verbally abused by others in the household, but they still have no idea why. We want to capture how naive and innocent they are, despite their pain. Chevrus will be playing the role of the older sister, Tulip, and Ayaka will be the younger sister, Iris. Be sure to get close-ups of the main characters at the right moment. Silence on the set! Lights! Camera! Action! Let's go! Tulip! Mother's been out for quite a while now. Mm. Perhaps she went to pick some flowers on the way home. You know how she loves flowers. Iris, to leap! I'm home! Mother! You were out for so long, we were beginning to worry about you. Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm back now, safe and sound. Here, I brought your favorite treat. Apple turnovers. Mother, what are those bruises on your hand? Huh? What bruises? Oh, I must have bumped into something while I was working yesterday. But I didn't notice them this morning. Then perhaps they're from when I accidentally tripped when I was out just now. By the way, did you have fun playing at home? What's the matter, Iris? Well, 
we've realized that no one really wants to play with us. They even took Iris's doll and spat at us. <sighs> and they even called us names. They said we were... Shh. It's all right. Don't worry. <sighs> Girls, listen to me. It doesn't matter what anyone says. Don't listen to them. No one can define you with such words. You both have wonderful lives ahead of you. Just like your names. You will both blossom like beautiful flowers. Maybe your time to blossom hasn't quite come yet. But one day, you two will bloom more beautifully than anything else. Don't let the soil you're in now ruin your future beauty, understand? <sighs> My dear daughters. And cut! Not bad. The actor's emotions were all on point. Let's keep that take. Also, if our clapper loader could avoid shouting at the start of the scene next time... Oh, uh... Got it! <sighs> Great. I was a little worried that my nerves would get the better of me. What about you, Chevras? I felt fine. The lines weren't too difficult at all. Seems like Farina must have adapted the role nicely. <laughs> you two were great! I couldn't tell it was your first time acting in a film. You should have more confidence. Thank you for your encouragement. Positions, everyone! We'll move on to the next scene after we try a few more camera angles. <laughs>